for 15 minutes yet. You're always ahead of time. <laughs> what did I tell you? again, Roy. I nearly got busted wide open myself. The car was right on the North Fork. Uh, be careful. I'll be seeing you. Oh, hello, Langhorn. Hello, Mr. Garrett. You boys ought to know Brett Langhorn. He's a new step of man, too. Brain of the New York Herald? How do you do, sir? Wallace, what do you call? Wallace? I'm only a crossroads publisher. I took over the Sentinel here, and I thought I might pick up something from New East and correspondent. No, we'll pass on anything that turns up, Langhorn. Thanks. Well, why don't you swap me for this genuine beaver rope? I'm busy now. See me later. What's the matter, Horseshoe? Can't you climb off those rabbit skins on anyone? What do you mean, rabbit skins? Genuine beaver. I don't know. Caught them myself. Well, don't you get caught around here when that pony comes in. Go on out and lead it. Hey, you youngins. Stay out of that. Roy Rogers is coming in with pony, and I don't want you cluttering up the place. Hey, and another thing. I don't want to catch none of you youngins touching this beaver rope. Is it really beaver? Yes, ma'am. The finest ever come out of the Rockies. Too bad I got to sell it, too, for about half price. How much is it worth? Oh, I'd say about a uh, hundred dollars. But I, I'd let you have it for fifty. Dear me. That's a lot of money. But I would like to have it. I'll tell you what I could do. I'd trade you even for that cameo pin of yours. Well. And uh, I'll throw in on one of Trigger's pet shoes, too. All right, then. Yes. You know, I'm a loser on this trade, but I always get soft-hearted when I get dicking with a woman. Now, don't forget the horseshoe and nail it up. Thank you. Pony! Coming in! Looks like you've set another record, Roy. Have any trouble getting through? Not much. The car wars are on the North Fork. Car wars? A large war party? No, just a handful. These are all for Fort Riley, Captain. Thank you, Garrett. And these for you, Brett. Thank you. Well, by the way, I don't think you two know each other. Roy, this is Brett Langhorn. Just bought the local newspaper. Brett, Roy Rogers, my top rider. Glad to know you. Howdy. Well, gentlemen, I have to get these letters for the East over to the stage station. By the way, former Senator Lassiter is coming in from the East on today's stage. Calhoun Lassiter? Why, he's a southern as Jeff Davis. Say, what's he doing out here in St. Joe anyway? Langhorne should know something about it. They're both from Maryland. Well, sorry I can't help you, gentlemen. The senator's an old family friend, but this is the first I've heard of him coming here. Quite a staunch confederate, isn't he? <laughs> He'd be worried he'd stay out of Union territory, wouldn't he? There's something in that. Say, there's the stage now. Welcome to San Joe, folks. Welcome to San Joe. Ah, uh, Senator, we've been expecting you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. Three cheers for the Senator. Thank <laughs> you. 
There, you're all right. No harm done. Well, I don't know how to thank you. Oh, Brad, Brad. This is my sister, Anne. Anne Roy Rogers, one of the pony riders. How do you do, Mr. Rogers? Very pleased to meet you, Miss Langhorn. I'll not try to thank you, Rogers. Well, that's all right. Somebody had to stop him. You two get in, and I'll drive you back to the station. Well, I, I'd almost rather walk. You're safe enough, miss, with Roy driving. you out here. Why didn't you write and tell me you were coming? Brent, I just had to come. You don't know what it's like in Maryland, where everything is war. Yeah, I know, honey. Did you have a good trip? Mm-hmm. I was fortunate enough to run into that charming Senator Lassiter. He thinks a lot of you, Brett. What did he say? Oh, lots of things. All nice things. He thinks you have a brilliant future as an editor. Is that so? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the Senator is a charming man. <laughs> box had been on her when she ran away, they might have gone out and stopped her ourselves. A little close to town even for you, Luke. <laughs> if I knew who did that gun shooting and yelling, I'd boot him until he'd sound like an Indian drum. Who's this young man? Uh, Roy Rogers, the best Pony Express rider in these or any other part. Pony rider. Splendid. Splendid. Are you quite all right, my dear? Yes, thank you. How are you, Brett? Fine, thank you, Senator. I must see you at once. Are the mails in from California? Yes, sir. Several letters. I'll take Ann home and meet you at my office in half an hour. Good. Thank you so, Mr. Rogers. We have a lot to thank Mr. Rogers for. I hope we'll see him frequently. Well, I hope so, too. Can I take them? Now, Roy, don't be getting a lot of silly ideas in that head of yours. <laughs> Interesting town. Isn't it? Interesting men. Yes, very. Especially Pony Express riders. Why, Brett Langhorn? <laughs> Who are those tough-looking men? <laughs> the big one leaning against the post is Luke Johnson. They say he's an outlaw. Well, why isn't he in prison? This isn't Maryland hunting. This is the frontier. The last two marshals that went after Johnson are dead. But why you picked a place like this to open up a newspaper is beyond me. <laughs> I have my reasons. deeds and bills of sale for the Sentinel. Uh, they're unimportant at the moment. Uh, Brett, do you know why you were sent out here? No, sir. My orders were to buy this paper and await further instructions from you. You're here to help me win the state of California for the Confederacy. Oh, I'm afraid I don't quite understand, sir. I have an organization in California working night and day to this end. Then why aren't we in California? Surely we can't help such a plan here. On the contrary, my boy. Before we can succeed, the loyal Union troops in Sacramento and San Francisco must be disposed of. How do you propose doing it from St. Joe? Through the Pony Express. If we can get forged dispatches into the mail pouches, we can dictate the movements of every Union trooper in California. With them disposed of, my own men will take over control of the state. I'm afraid that's impossible, sir. All the Pony Riders are loyal to the North. Have you forgotten the power of money? Take this chap, Roy Rogers. He's young, eager, undoubtedly ambitious. There's a situation made for our purpose. That's bribery, sir. I don't like bribery. Brett? Before this war is won, we will all be called upon to make sacrifices we do not like. Remember your oath as a Confederate officer. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, sir. What do you want me to do? Win the confidence of this Roy Rogers. Then I would suggest... These my heels sure do stiffen up. Well, they ain't no wonder. Let him alone, Roy. I'll take care of him. Hello, Roy. Hi, are you, Brent? I've been looking for you. Morning, Horseshoe. Morning, Mr. Longhorn. What's on your mind? Oh, nothing really important. When do you ride west again? Tomorrow. Oh. Well, we better make it tonight, then. 
Ann and I would like to have you take dinner with us, if it's all right with you and convenient for you. Well, that's fine. Only thing is, I don't have any clothes for things like that. <laughs> Ann would never forgive you if you came all dressed up. Come just as you are, guns and all. All right, I'll be there. Fine. Hey, horseshoe. Finish this in the heel. I gotta get that. I know. I hear all about it. The sun shines bright on my old Kentucky home. Tis summer, the doggies are gay. The corn cobs ripe and the meadows in the While the birds make music all the day, weep no more, my lady, oh, weep no more today. ridiculous amount. Well, there are times I wish it were more. I've been told it wouldn't be difficult for a pony rider to make money, real money, if he wanted to. I never heard of it. These are troubled times. A lot of mighty important events hinge on the dispatches you pony riders carry. I know that. Roy, there are men who would pay well to see those dispatches. Do you know these men? Well... You're not leaving. I guess I'd better. You're too interested in the Pony Express. What do you mean by that? You not only know these men, you're working for them. I don't like either your tone or your insinuations. I don't care whether you like it or not. Brent! Brent, you're hurt! No, that's... Nothing, I... We just had a little difference of opinion on politics, that's all. As much my fault as his, we we both lost our temper. You accept my brother's hospitality and then shoot him. Oh, please go. 
set to go? Yes, sir. You'll meet the eastbound rider at the Laramie station, and you can take the next one in. I'll be back before the end of the week. Good luck to you, Art. Just got a wire. Your Pony Express payroll from the east has arrived at Fort Forward. They're sending it on under cavalry escort. That's fine. That's all in gold, you know, and there's been a lot of Confederate raids lately. Hi, Jackie. Got another trade, Horseshoe? Uh, no. No, I ain't, uh, Cherokee. But about that, uh, cameo pin, I was thinking that... Uh... Yeah, I know. Mighty nice pin. Yes, sir. Larry Burns wrote the Ace High Saloon, give me $50 for it. What? $50? Larry, I'll tell you what I'll do with you. You give me that cameo, and I'll give you $60. Just as soon as the pony payroll gets in. Or sure, you never had sixty dollars at one time in your life. Well, I know, but I got too much pay coming to me. They're going to pay in gold too, because that's the way the payroll's coming in. When's it going to get here? Well, it's coming from Fort Ford. Ought to be here any time. But I got to see the money before you get the pin. Oh, Larry. Go on. You got work to do. <laughs> Whatever you say goes to me, Luke. This knocking over a detail of cavalry could be pretty serious. They might even recognize us. Dead men don't recognize anybody. Here they come, Luke. <laughs> Silver to back up our gold. No, well, you always did talk too much. Let us have a drink. I'll catch up with you later. I gotta get some tobacco. Thank you so much, Mr. Lathro. <laughs> Just a little girl to be kind to me to make bundles. Let me take them. <laughs> Come on, let's have them. Please let me pass. Don't you? That's an old dodge, Freddy. But it don't work. Nobody in this town would dare shoot play Molson, even in the back. Oh. Who they were. I think I know who did this. Luke Johnson. 
Now, wait a minute. Ain't supposed to be good judgment talking out loud like that. This is most distressing, Garrett. I trust the loss isn't a serious one. Sorry to hear about this, Dan. Serious enough, but it'll be toughest on the boys. I can't get another payroll through for at least three weeks. Oh, that's most unfortunate. I'd be glad to personally subscribe. Well, the boys wouldn't like that, Senator. Then uh, might I suggest something like a ball given in the name of St. Joe? A public gesture, anything to provide temporary funds for these gallant Pony Express riders. It'd be splendid, Dan. The whole town will turn out. I'd get out an extra edition of the Sentinel and we really have a party out of it. I was terribly proud when they asked me to have the entertainment committee, but I'll need a lot of help. That's why I want you to sing a song, and then you'll be able to... But then I couldn't do that. I'd mess the whole thing up. Besides, Dan Garrett said I had to ride out special tomorrow night. Well, for heaven's sake, what for? There's an army order coming through. It's mighty important. They're even sending a special courier from Washington with it. Well, you'll be here for a little while, won't you? Oh, sure. I just got to be ready to ride out fast, that's all. Well, it seems to me the Yankees could find some other time to send out their orders. I'm a Yankee. But you're one of the nice ones. Even Brett likes you now. Oh, that reminds me. I must go to Brett's office to get some money. Will you be here when I get back? I sure will. I think it's a disgrace, Senator. Everybody in St. Joe knows that Johnson held up the pony payroll. That he and his men swagger around here as if they own the place. Spending gold pieces like water. Knowing it is one thing, proving it is another. Remember, he left no witnesses. No. A murderer. Oh, Anne, dear. So good to see you. You're always like a breath of the old South. Oh, Senator, you do say the prettiest thing. Brett, honey, I need some money. How much this time? Oh, lots. I've got lots to get for the party. Hey, uh... How's your shooting mailman? Why, Brett, you know he's not just a mailman. He's really important. When he rides west tomorrow night, he'll carry army dispatches. He told me so. Oh, I'm afraid he's spoofing you a bit, as the English say. All pony riders carry army dispatches. But not as important as these. They're coming by special courier from Washington. Oh, well, that's fine, sugar. But hadn't you better do your shopping? Oh, I know. You and the senator want to talk over things. I'll see you at dinner. Brett, we must get those dispatches. But how? Can you arrange to have Johnson meet me here without attracting any attention? Johnson? He's the very man we need, my boy. But, Senator, he's an outlaw, a bandit. Surely you wouldn't take such a character into our confidence. For the great cause we both serve, we must use any instrument that comes to our hands. Get this Johnson here for me tonight. Very well, sir. Oh, I did. And I'll come straight to the point. How would you like to make a lot of money? Nothing shady, I hope, Senator. Nothing shadier than that Pony Express payroll hold-up. I wouldn't if I were you. What's your proposition? I thought we'd understand each other. I want you to raise the Pony Express. What for? Those pony riders don't carry anything but letters and army dispatches. There's no money in them. Johnson, whoever controls those dispatches controls the Union troops in California. So you are working for the South, Senator. Huh? That's what the South thinks. But I'm working for Calhoun Lassiter. And when I succeed, California will become the Republic of the Pacific, with me at its head. How do you aim to do that? Very simply, with forged orders on the Pony Express. All right, where do I come into all of this? You're going to raid the Pony Express office here in St. Joe tomorrow night while the ball is going on. I'd never get away with it. Why not get the rider before you reach it, St. Joe? Let me make myself clear. This mustn't look like a raid on those dispatches. The motive for an attack on the express office could be plain robbery. And during the confusion, you can switch my fake dispatches for the real ones. And nobody knows about the switch, eh? That's right. How about me being recognized? I can fix that. A Confederate supply train is camping at Pipestone Wells tonight. You and your men can get there by dawn. Why do we have to check these trains anyway? I'm afraid of them. It's in a Tomasita's idea. He said it would prevent any trouble and the men wouldn't resent it if we had them. Oh, Roy, check 
Thank you, Mr. Steve. What for? Well, this is a respectable party. Rest and all the men do it. But I can't, Ann. When I leave here, I'm going to have to leave in a hurry. I better keep them with me. Oh, Roy, please don't spoil it. Come on, Ryan. Do what the lady asks you. Well, you're running this party. Here they are. Just for that, you may have two dances. Say, for three dances, you can just keep those guns. Now, nah, listen, don't get a lot of foolish ideas in your head. Is everything ready? Have you got the uniforms? Yes, where are the dispatches? Right here. If these get through to California, you'll wear a general's uniform in the Republic of the Pacific. At this rate, Mrs. Farr, I might wear a rope right here in St. Joe. You've checked everything? I'll get word the minute Garrett sends for Rogers. And then? Two minutes after that, you'll think the whole Confederate Army has moved into St. Joe. Good. Now, don't you worry none, ma'am. For just as soon as the dance is over, I'll get you that cameo. You better. There's a pony rider here that can sing just as well as he can ride. And that's saying a lot. Miss Langhorn, trot him out. And I thought you were a pal of mine. Go on, sing. It's all yours, son. Thank you. Out in the bunkhouse Gathering dust are two comets bright and true. Battered, neglected, covered with rust, I've kept them the long years through. Rusty spurs hanging there, forgotten on the wall. Wondering. Dreaming of the days beyond recall Symbol of the olden ways Relic of the golden days Just a pair of rusty spurs Rusty spurs Do you hear the cattle on the trail? Do you miss the music of the coyote's lonely wail? What a story you could tell Of the days we knew so well Dusty pair of rusty spurs Where are all the saddle pals We rode with long ago All of them have vanished Like the herds of buffalo Rusty spurs You're the only keepsake that remains all the rest are scattered far and wide across the plain. Though your riding days are through, I will always treasure you, trusty pair of lucky
attention. Get one of those loose horses out there and ride west and make it fast. All right, boss. That posse's right behind us, Luke. I know it, but I've got to get rid of these fake dispatches. must be over. Brett, did you have anything to do with it? Well, no, Anne. Then why didn't you let me give him the key? All right, I'll tell you. Maybe I should have told you before. Anne, I'm... I'm an agent of the Confederate Secret Service. Brett! Oh, now, honey, somebody has to do it. Oh, but Brett, that... That means you're a spy. Are you ashamed of me? Oh, no, darling, not ashamed, but, but afraid. Why, if you're caught, they'll kill you. They killed them back there in the army, too, sugar. No, Brett, there's been enough killing for tonight. Go in there. Please, Brett, do as I say. It's late and I'm... It's not too late to find out who's responsible for that raid. Who did you tell about those dispatches? Dispatches? Well, I don't know what you mean. I was afraid you'd say that. I trusted you, told you things I had no right to tell you. And as a result, people have been killed. That raid wasn't successful, but you did everything you could to help it by trying to keep our guns locked up. Is that all? Yes, that's all. Except... Well... I guess I'd better go. Rogers, you're wanted at headquarters. What for? You'll find out. Come on. Sorry, Miss Langhorn, but I'm well, not. Well, my brother isn't here. I'm not interested in your brother. My orders are to escort you to Pony Express headquarters. Oh. Well, very well. May I get my cloak? Oh, yes, of course. Thank you. Garrett says he told you, and you only, those dispatches were coming in tonight. Who did you talk to? I've talked to a heap of people around St. Joe. So that's your attitude. Do you realize I could have you taken to Fort Riley under arrest and held there until further. Just a minute, Lieutenant. I saw Roy with a six-shooter in each hand, smoking his way to the station. I'll admit he may be a little careless, but that's all. And I know how to fix that. Roy, you'll go to Laramie tonight. Until further orders, you'll ride west, where you can't find out anything important. Yes, sir. Can I take Trigger with me? No, I'm sorry. But I can't lose my top rider and the fastest horse on the St. Joe run at the same time. Yes, sir. Good luck, son. Ms. 
Langhorn, Lieutenant. This is an unpleasant duty, Miss Langhorn, but I am forced to inform you that you're under arrest until you can be tried by court-martial. Court-martial? Your conduct at the Pony Express Ball tonight gives us every reason to believe you are trying to assist the Raiders. Lieutenant Harris. Yes, sir. You will be responsible for Miss Langhorn's appearance at the trial. That is all. Garrett, can I uh, get transferred? Why? Well, it's sort of a, a private matter. All right, I'll show you. Go to Deer Lodge. Is that all right? Sure. Sure. going, Roy? Transferred to Laramie. Well, that burned my button. Why in tarnation didn't you tell me? I've transferred too. I'm going to Deer Lodge. You know, Roy, I'm going to miss you. That goes double, horseshoe. Look out for those trades you've been making. Hey, Roy, I ain't never going to trade nothing no more. But you didn't want me to come here in daylight. Ordinarily, but today, uh, let me read you something. Here's something that came on today's pony. One million dollars in gold bullion has been shipped to England on a British flag to avoid Confederate blockade runners. The vouchers made to bear are payable through the Bank of England agents in New York. They will be sent by Pony Express to arrive in St. Joe on the 15th. You realize the importance of this? I know what a million dollars means. We failed in getting the dispatches. We mustn't fail in this. We won't. We'll raid every relay station between here and Laramie. Splendid. And I'll meet you later at Deer Lodge Station. I wish he wouldn't come here. He won't in the future. Have you seen Anne? Yes. She's as comfortable as she can be under the circumstances. Now I've got to go to Richmond and leave her. Richmond? Yes, sir. Lane got a tip from his California correspondent. There's a big shipment of Union gold on its way to England. Headquarters may want to send a blockade runner after it. Impossible. It's being shipped under a British flag. Then you know about it? By, uh, yes, I had, uh, word today on the Pony Mail. Oh, well, I have to get word to Richmond. No, I forbid you to go. It may arouse false hopes. You don't want news of the gold to reach Richmond? Why? Brett? You might as well know, I never intended to take California for the Confederacy. California is going to become the Republic of the Pacific with me at its head. And this gold will help me to establish it. Well, you can't sacrifice the Confederacy to a mad dream like this. It's far from a dream. Johnson is on his way now to get the vouchers from the pony. And I've got to get to Richmond. I heard a shot. A shot? Ugh. Mr. Langhorn! Oh! I called out to Lawson. Never mind, Lawson. Go to... Go to Dan Garrett. Tell him... Tell him I've got to see him. <laughs> you lie here. Sorry, Ann. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I trusted Lassiter. I would have died for it. <laughs> I guess, guess that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> oh, Brett, darling, what can I do? Fine, Rogers. Tell him the truth. Tell him to get Lassiter for me. <laughs> oh. oh. There. There, my dear. No, don't, don't please, not now. Tell Lieutenant Harris to... Take me to Dan Garrett. Yes. Yes. And my brother said that Lassiter would stop at nothing to get those gold vouchers. Lassiter and Johnson are working together. Johnson? We'd better stop this, Trent. 
Logan, check Logan. Yes, sir. You've got to get through to Laramie and warn them. How much time have I got? As usual, not enough, but you've got to get through. Well, I'll do my best. Good boy and good luck. Take trigger. Yes, sir. I'll get the cavalry from Fort Riley. Right. You're riding to St. Joe today. But Dan Garrett said that I had... To... I know what Dan said, but this is important. Today's pony carries gold vouchers that may change the whole course of the war. It's got to get through to St. Joe. Yes, sir. Now, you know the trails between here and St. Joe better than any rider on the pony. That's why I'm sending you. Oh, he's coming in! He's badly hurt. Raiders. Anyway, the gold vouchers are safe. On your way, Roy.
shoot. If he thinks, we'll never get the vouchers. All right. We'll circle around and catch him when he gets to the other shore. Robert sent me through with today's pony. Have you seen anything of Horseshoe and Trigger? They're all right. Probably in St. Joe by now. Oh, they're coming in! I saved the Mohila! Well, good work, Horseshoe. I'll see that you're promoted for this. Thanks. And a mighty good job, even if I do say it myself. That's him, Marshal! That's the man that swiveled me out of my cameo. Oh, Mrs. Murphy. <laughs> Come here. You're under arrest. What's this? Well, there's quite a lot to it, Roy. But the main part reads something like this. I suggest that Miss Langhorn be immediately released to the custody of Roy Rogers. Signed, Lieutenant J.J. J. Trent. Did you send for this Turner Dan? Oh, yes, yes. How would you like to trade him for a nice cameo brooch? And I'm throwing on a trigger pet shoes to boot. Good luck. <laughs> 